So as promised, now we're going to build up to integrating. And instead of looking at like individual charges, one place here and one place here and one place here, one place here, we're going to look at this continuous line of charge. And remember when we were talking about um, induction or uh, charge transfer, we discussed how charges will evenly distribute themselves. So if there is a net amount of charge, be it positive or negative, the repulsive forces are going to balance themselves out to minimize that repulsion. So I'm going to end up with these like equidistant spaced extra charges. Tragically, everything we do is positive, so we're going to just pretend that we stripped off a bunch of electrons off the surface of a rod or whatever you want to call it. But now we can start talking about things that you're going to see more regularly in real life. And you can think of this rod as being like a line of charge, if you will, a, a, a cable. Something that you can actually connect two wires to. And you're going to have electrons flow in that wire Well, you're going to have excess charge. That's kind of making it more realistic. So I want to remind ourselves of a couple of things. We have our fundamental definition of an electric field is kq over r squared. And that still holds true. And the other thing is that symmetry is our friend. Let's write that over here. Just remind ourselves. Symmetry. We like it. So whenever we're tackling anything, we want to first look to see if there's any symmetry we can capitalize on to make our lives easier. That's a biggie. And the other thing is then we want to also define how these charges are distributed. So I am going to have this evenly dispersed amount of charge over whatever thing I'm looking at, in this case, this rod. And if it's evenly distributed, so what is that going to look like? It's going to say that the charge on the rod is some overall amount of Q. And that over amount, overall amount of Q, let's call this the whole thing length L, is over the total distance L of that rod. We define that as this little thing lambda, or linear charge density. Linear charge density. So when we're looking at continuous lines of charge, when you look in your textbook, you're going to see several things. There's lambda, there's eta, and what they're describing is how charges will distribute in different types of volumes or lines or geometries. And we can use these definitions to work with. So the nice thing is, what I want to look at here, I'm going to start with just pick one. Pick one charge. And pick your point out here. And let's define this as R. I'm going to define that as R. And because this is the y-axis, even though this whole thing is L, I'm going to go like from 0 to this top spot will be Y. You'll see Y. Huh, see Y? Anyway, okay. So what's going to happen? Am I going to be repelled from or attracted to? My little test probe charge is going to be repelled from or you can remind yourselves that we define fields as going out from a positive and into a negative. So I'm going to have, not that, actually let's just do a straight line. I'm going to do my bestest to draw a straight line that is not. See, at least we can all confirm that I will never be an architect. All right, it's so kind of like this. And it's going to kind of come down like this. That's more or less through the center. Now, symmetry. Symmetry. Actually, let's add the arrow here. So my electric field's coming out like that. I look down at the other end of the rod, and that too is going to repel because it's the same charge, right? So I'm the same distance away, same charge. Symmetry is my friend. So I'm going to draw an arrow. Oh my, I'm excited, I think. They're darn near the same length. This is a first. Let's celebrate it for a second. Okay, we're done. All right, so what do we have here? We have an electric field from two points, but I have a continuous distribution. So what we're going to call these two different fields is like E1, 
or DE1, if we will. And this one I'll call DE2, some, some teeny tiny. So remember, when we do integration, we're adding up these little line segments. So this would be some amount of DQ and some length of DY. And the same thing with here. I'm going to have some DQ of some length DY. And that's going to give me a teeny tiny chunk of this electric field. And then I can look at this, and because I was emphasizing symmetry, let's think about what's happening with the field in its x and y components. So I can see from this, I'm going to come out in the x, and they both come out in the same direction, so those are summative. But then when I look at my y's, I have one coming up and one coming down. points are equidistance apart, so my r is the same, and the magnitude of the charges are the same. So that being said, even if I haven't drawn this well, to make it totally obvious, that vector and that vector are going to cancel out. Those would be like my DE and the Y, like 1 and DE and the Y. E, sorry, let's erase that, make it neater. D, E, and the Y, too. Sweet. So I don't need to worry about that. They cancel. I'm done. The only thing I need to focus on is my X. So to do the X, I'm definitely going to need to know what that angle is. And remember, even though the lengths of the vectors aren't the same as the physical scenario, the angles are going to be the same. We have this linear vector, and then we'll call it that, or array, that's a better choice. This ray shooting through, so I can use the trig from what I know, so my distances that I have here. And again, I'm going to call this just an overall distance of y and an r. So Pythagorean, I know my r is going to be y squared plus r squared. I have that. And what do I want? I want the x component of this, so I can do it for either. They're similar triangles. So my x component for that angle is going to be, let's see, cosine of theta equals adjacent, my r, over my hypotenuse, the square root of y squared plus r squared. Okay, So I have the thing that's going to pull out that chunk of the resultant vector. And my electric field then is going to be, let's see, my change in the electric field from my little teeny tiny chunk is going to be my K. What do I have? I have this DQ, pulling out the little piece of Q for that chunk, over my R squared. So that is my hypotenuse squared. Square of a square root is going to give me Y squared plus r squared, and now I want my x component. So times, oops, put my parentheses there, times r over the square root of y squared plus r squared. Okay, so now let's think about this. The other thing I've mentioned is what we want is the fewest number of variables, and I have two. I have a dq and a y changing. That's not happy. So let's see if we can't fix that. Well, if I'm, this overall length is L, but I can define it in terms of y. So I can take this guy over here and think, okay, so I'm going with my change in charge over my change in length is going to give me my linear charge density. Or I can rewrite this is that my change in charge is going to equal my change in length times my linear charge density, which makes me feel good because it's going to be how the charge is distributed times that teeny, teeny, tiny, infinitesimally small piece of length we're taking out. So let's rewrite this. So then I'll get my DE is going to equal my K times my R over, and if you saw the last video, this is the same as 2 over 2, otherwise known as 1, and I can rewrite my square root. Let's 
I can do this neatly. It's almost neatly. There we go. That's the one half. One half plus one is three halves. So that's nice. That stays kind of the same. Y squared plus R squared to the three halves. There's that part. And my DQ, so now let's make this substitution, is dy times lambda. All right, so now I'm ready to start setting up this integration. I'll have the integral of dE is going to equal, we can pull out our constants. So I'll have k, <clears throat> the distance away r is not changing. That's constant, so I can pull that out. And as, as is lambda, that's constant, so I can pull that out, times the integral of 1 over y squared plus r squared to the 3 halves dy. All right, so why did I switch from L to Y? Well, so let's take a look at this. By symmetry, I can go like this. I can go from 0 to L or L over 2, rather, because the whole length is L. So 0 to L over 2, if I multiply that by 2, that gives me the whole length. So I don't have to do two integrals or do negative L over 2 to L over 2. So now let's see. The integral of dE, well, that's just going to give me E. It's going to equal KR. Let's bring out our 2 KR lambda, multiplying it by 2 because I'm going to just cut it in half to make life easier. I'm going to go from 0 to L over 2, 1 over y squared plus r squared to the 3 halves dy. This thing here, this integral, you pull up in an integral table. That's not something that I'd expect you to be able to do right now. So you just get a table of integrals, and that comes out to, I've got to try to remember, let's see, an r squared is going to pop out, yep r squared is going to pop out oops on the bottom not on the top so I get e equals 2 k r lambda I'm going to get an r squared that comes out because it's constant and then what does that give me on the inside I end up with a y over y squared plus r squared to the 1 half. Again, you would get that from a table of integrals. And it's not I just did that in my head, and that's what I expect from you. You'd be able to look that up in your book. All right, so can we simplify this? Sure. One of those r's goes away. I can rewrite this then as then e equals 2 k lambda over r times. Now evaluating L into 2 at my y's. So I'll end up with L over 2 divided by L over 2 squared plus R squared to the 1 half. And because I chose to do like just taking the half of it, so it's going to be minus 0. If I put 0 into the y on the top, that just comes out 0. So it's much cleaner. We're almost there. So let's see. This 2 is going to cancel with that 2. I get E equals K lambda over R times L. Let's just do this. 1 over L squared over 4 plus R squared to the 1 half. So this is kind of fun because the one thing that we can think about is what like we, we did with the um, dipole. So what happens if R is much, much greater than my L? So if R is much, much greater than my L, then like this piece would go away. Let's see. And this kind of feels like so for, let me write that down, R much, much greater than L. I would end up with k lambda l over r times 1 over r squared to the 1 half. Yeah, to the 1 half. That's fine. That looks goofy. 
Let me write it up top. To the one half. And then I look at that, the one half of the r squared. Ooh, that simplifies down simply to ky l over r squared. What? Yeah, so let's take a look. What does that mean? Lambda l. Oh, lambda l is just another way. Lambda l equals q. Hmm. So at a distance of r much, much greater than l, what do we get? We get k q over r squared. That means that that entire rod looks like a point charge. Kind of nice. And it's also a great way of double checking to make sure that we set everything up right. But our general, general equation then for this line of charge, if you look in your book, that is what you will see. And that was actually a lot more straightforward than the ugliness I had you do. So hopefully that's starting to make a little bit more sense and be not so intimidating. It's supposed to just stop when I do that. Draw us.